pop quiz to all the fathers out there in the world. What are 10 things you would teach your son before you die? No rhyme or reason, no special occasion. And I know this would probably have been a better episode if this was June, but I think we all have to think about our mortality, especially our fathers. What are 10 things that you would teach your son before you die? Now, the idea is this. You never know when you're going to die. So these are 10 things that are going to be on my bucket list for my two sons. Because I may have another 40 years to teach them this. I may have 40 hours to teach them this. But I do believe some of these things are important. And some of the things that might have helped me become the man that I am today. So here we go in regards to my list of 10 things. And I hope that you guys think about 10 things that you would do as fathers to teach your sons uh, before you die to hopefully have them become better people. So number one, manners. Manners, being polite, uh, and that includes being chivalrous and being a gentleman. Now, I'm from the South, and I was always taught about being polite, having good manners. Yes, ma'am. No, sir. Thank you. Please. All that good stuff. And I do believe that goes a long way, especially in a world today where a lot of the times the respect for the elders or not even the respect for the elders, just respect for your equals. It's just, I find it very hard to come by. And I don't think it's because that there are degenerates out there, but I do believe that manners have to be taught and reciprocity has to be a big factor. Um, I know for sure that as an adult, I still refer to uh, people that I don't know or people that I don't have a really strong, comfortable, friendly relationship. I still use a lot of ma'am and sir. And also, uh, I find it very interesting that I, and I don't know where I got it from. I also do with kids. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And I do believe that when you teach them that way, then you're going to get a level of reciprocity where uh, even if they don't do it with everyone, you might teach them in a way that they'll do it with you. So I find that manners and being polite and doing those little things, being chivalrous also, you know, opening doors for ladies, pulling out chairs, things like that. I think it goes a long way being a gentleman because it goes to show you that the intimidation factor and not just of being a man sometimes by being an african-american man and i'm really this list is kind of going from that standpoint of not just being a man but they will have some sprinkles of personality towards being an african-american man where sometimes you just have to do things a little bit differently uh to either not be as intimidating or or to just uh, relieve some of that ease of tension and it's not to say that you owe anyone that. I'm not even going that route to where you don't have to owe anybody nothing. Just be black, be proud. I am black. I am proud. I think the idea is it's just that you see so many bad examples or examples where people believe that this is the norm and everyone is a certain way that, okay, then the bias tends to cover everyone that looks, walks, talks a certain way. So I believe that not just for the culture, not just for uh, my race, me personally, having good manners, being polite, being chivalrous, being a gentleman is going to set you apart in the crowd and is going to command a level of respect, I also believe, because a lot of the times it is hard to refute refute someone being nice, be, uh, someone having manners, someone being polite. It's really, really hard to not uh, reciprocate that type of thing. So my number one thing would be teaching them manners, being polite, at least the basics uh, to carry themselves a certain way as a gentleman, as a young man, as an adult also. 
Number two, being social. This can be kind of vague, but I want to twist it into this standpoint. Being social as far as being able to be within a group, any subsection, any place, any feel, any manner, any time, any group, any age. Being able to swim in that type of social environment is very special because what I do also feel in this generation is that people are comfortable with people that look like them, have the same ideas as them, make the same amount of money, are part of the same circle. And to me, that's 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 a cop out because being social, you're not getting anything out of being social with people that are exactly the same as you. You're not growing and all you're doing, you really are creating an echo chamber whether it's politics or religion or lifestyle, you have to be around people that are different from you. And being able to be social uh, in a competent manner allows you to learn from other people, to share your ideas, to influence other people on your ideas. And it's able to grow the community and the, and the environment. And it helps us to create a society where it's not just people being tolerant of one another. Uh, people are being accepting and people are growing into being more well-rounded human beings. So being social is a very important thing because being social allows you to communicate with others and it allows you to not be isolated and feel as lonely. And that works especially as you get older because your circle tends to thin out. But if you can always be somewhere where you can make a friend or make an acquaintance, whether it be at work, at the grocery store, or even just at the park. Somewhere where you are dropped into, you won't feel as if you are, you can't breathe in a social situation. So being social is something very, very important. Grooming skills. I think as a man, you have to have some grooming skills because allowing yourself to just let go bad things are going to happen because, you know, hair is going to grow out of control. Facial hair is going to grow out of control. I mean, we are, uh, I'm not going to say Neanderthals, but we do have hairy bodies. We smell, we have all types of different things going on, but grooming skills kind of helps us to be somewhat presentable and in the best way possible. And I mean, everyone's grooming skills are different, but having some level of basic grooming skills whether it's having a signature hairstyle, uh, signature grooming facial hair. Uh, I've got friends, well, you might know a couple of them, the green eye scent guy, and I'm going to name drop him, uh, having a specific scent. You know, some guys have a, a calling card for their specific uh, cologne, a smell. You know, and all those things come into grooming. And by grooming yourself and having grooming skills, is going to add to your self-confidence and allow you to be social and to have manners and not be self-conscious about who you are. Uh, being clean is being healthy. Taking care of yourself uh, leads to a longer life. It allows you to be amongst people who will not just be tolerant of you, but accepting of you. And I think a lot of the times we eat with our eyes and that's a part of being eye candy to some people. Uh, and looking for mates, being courted, uh, being as a potential suitor, being a part of that that gumball machine or lottery of potential people that someone might want to procreate with. So grooming skills are very, very important because I think as a human being, it's your responsibility to take care of yourself at a young age, you know, and whether it's the basics of washing your face and brushing your teeth in the morning as kids, uh, brushing your hair. It's about maintaining that, you know, dressing properly, being presentable as an adult. So I think grooming skills are very, very important. Know your way around a vehicle. Men, I am tired in some instances of seeing women change tires. Now, I understand it's not your job to be a boy scout and go out and see every woman on the side of the road and 
help them with their cars. Oh, that, that would be great. That would be very, very good. And I know that karma is going to treat you in a positive manner if someone sees you this. But knowing your way around a vehicle personally and for your mate or family members, uh, just having a level of competency where you know how to change oil, change a tire, uh, basic maintenance on a vehicle uh, because I believe with something like that it is an investment and it's going to help your investment last for a long time I know myself when I first had my car my first car as a kid where I really all I did was put gas in the car and luckily for me I never ran into an instance where I got a flat tire or something broke on me you know it was one of those things where as a kid you just get lucky the car serves a purpose it gets you to A to B and that's pretty much it. But as I've gotten older, I realized that a car or a vehicle is an investment and you don't always want to have a car note. You want to be able to have your vehicle last beyond the last payment of your car note. So that's that's the basics of changing your tires or fixing a flat, changing your oil, not letting your car run out of gas, properly fueling it, windshield wipers, cleaning inside, dot, 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 knowing your way around a vehicle. And that's more than just knowing how to drive stick or knowing how to drive in traffic, defensive driving, all that other stuff. Knowing your way around a vehicle will take you a long way as a man because no one wants to be stranded on the side of the road. No one wants to be on foot, especially if you bought or paid for that investment, which is a vehicle. So knowing your way around a vehicle to me, it's something I believe I want to teach my sons before they die. And also, it's another skill, another, not going to say gruff, manly skill, but it's just something about, you know, being able to talk cars with guys, even the basics. You know, it's another way to shoot the breeze with guys, and especially old school guys, because today, the way cars are being made is not really a thing where they want you to be able to work on your own vehicle. The car lots are losing money because people aren't buying cars. So they get you by getting you into the service station. So knowing your way around a car or a vehicle will allow you to be more well-rounded. It allows you to keep more money in your pocket. And it allows you to help out uh, in another capacity. Being domestic. I think being domestic, and I'm going to use this term widely, it doesn't just mean putting on a pink apron and having a feather duster and you're carrying it around. I think being domestic is being able to take care of a household on your own. And that also includes being outside and cutting the grass and doing things like outside maintenance, weed eating, because that's also domestic too, because the inside and the outside play a role together as part of being a house. That's another investment. So being domestic for guys, and I was taught this way, learning how to do laundry, ironing, cooking, and you don't have to be Chef Gordon Ramsay. I mean, if you know how to make the basic things and you don't burn down the house, I think you're going to be fine. And also being domestic can also lead into these other things like being social. You can host things if you know how to have a signature meal. And I would suggest to somebody, too, if you're trying to catch somebody, being domestic is one of those ways to do it because you're going to have a well-kept house. It's going to be clean. It's going to look presentable at all times. And even having that go-to meal that you can prepare for a date or a party, you have to know how to do these things to become well-rounded. So uh, wrapping that domestic part up, especially being a kitchen guy that I am, you got to have a go-to meal, a go-to meal for a date, a go-to meal for a party that you can do in bulk. You have to know how to barbecue something because that's just your meal ticket right there, knowing how to barbecue. Um, maybe one dessert because the idea is this. If you don't know how to do it and mom's not around and you don't have a spouse or a partner that'll do it, you're going to spend a lot of money on those things that are very, very simple. And also, if you're looking on the health tip, too, 
being domestic and it, it has those creative juices to where you have your own flair that you're either going to put on a dish or uh, decorating your house or even coming towards the type of furniture you have in your house. Being domestic, which means taking care of your house, your domicile, inside and out, keeping it well kept, cleaning it, being able to make a meal and doing those things that we used to back in the day say that those were women things, which, which are not. You know, I was always taught something can always happen to your spouse or you might not have a spouse at all. Be able to be able to take care of a house yourself. Then you won't have to be dependent on someone doing it for you. Number six, let's move out of the kitchen. So instead of being domestic, now we're going to talk about building a strong work ethic. I think building a strong work ethic is just something that everyone not just boys need to learn from fathers. So I stress having a strong work ethic because a strong work ethic allows a person to complete things, allows the person to achieve their goals, allow people to bounce back, uh, being able to have those qualities to keep going and keep pushing uh, above and beyond. And it's not just in a competitive sense. I also feel like when you're working and having a strong work ethic, you really draw people around you. You become a leader amongst those that might be looking for leaders or a leader amongst potential followers because they see that strong work ethic and they want to pattern themselves after you. And sometimes a strong work ethic isn't about being the best. A strong work ethic can be just uh, lasting the longest, you know, not giving up, always uh, trying to achieve the best. And I think having that strong work ethic is it's just something that makes a person special. I think it makes a person unique. And I think people look at that and they transition that into a successful person. Number seven, education is your friend. Education is something that in the beginning we get used to it being forced upon us through grade school and even college. Education is needed to become successful. And yes, that's true. Education will separate yourself from someone who is not educated. But education goes beyond books. Education goes into life experiences, traveling, seeing different cultures, being social and seeing people, learning from those and being willing to learn from those things that you don't know, opening your mind up about politics or, or things that you're unsure of, being willing to participate in the discourse of opinions. Especially with this day and age, we have so many different lifestyles, so many different peoples, ways of thinking that just opening your ears is education itself. And going beyond that, we talked about all these other things, being domestic, uh, grooming, uh, social, these type of things, you're educating yourself onto being a more well-rounded person. And I do believe learning how to be a DIY person or even going back to school, education keeps the mind flexible and pliable. It allows you to become a better person. It allows you to continue to grow your worth and your value as a human being as you get older. Education is not to be feared, although in some places, uh, organized education can cost you money. We live in a day and age of YouTube where you can learn anything at the click of a button. So not having education is almost hard to even fathom because you really have to turn your back and properly make an effort to not wanting to learn something. So education is your friend. Never shy away from education because it's always an opportunity to learn more about yourself as a person. Number eight, perseverance. I think with perseverance, it's never giving up. And it's being able to get knocked down and getting back up. It's being able to continue to push. Especially in a day and age of inequality. Uh, things are not being fair for certain aspects of certain uh, people in general. Persevering allows you to continue to do what you do at the level that you do despite the results that one would expect 
or one demands even. I think perseverance builds character. Perseverance shows others that your work ethic is tied to your character. And perseverance allows people to get up off the ground when they're downtrodden or disenfranchised or they've been dealt a bad hand. Perseverance shows people that you can pull yourself up by the bootstraps and become something because 90% of this world is just continuing to run the race. And I think most times people aren't used to being down. So when they are down, they give up. And I'm talking about people that were born on third base or people that were born into wealth or things of that nature. Perseverance allows those people to continue when they get knocked down a peg. Perseverance allows people who have not even seen that level of success strive to continue doing what they're doing in hopes of reaching that level of success. Perseverance is just such a special quality to have in a person. And it, it, it really does attract people towards you. Number nine, humility and empathy. These are tied so close towards each other because one moment you can be up, one moment you can be down. It's having that quality and that thing inside of you that allows you to be humble when you're the best. It allows you to keep things in perspective. While at the same time, empathy allows you to pat that person on the back who isn't doing so well. It's because sometimes we also need empathy also in our lives for those that have been knocked down a peg or those who have suffered losses, uh, those who have failed at some point. Because failure is not permanent. But having empathy allows you to be an example to others. And then that, in turn, can be allowed to be shown towards you. Because there's nothing worse than a sore loser. There's nothing worse than a sore winner. You know, I believe that when it comes to humility, that just because you have it doesn't mean you have to be a terrible person about it. You can get your hairs out of the clouds. You don't have to have your nose in the air. Being humble and showing humility to others is actually a great characteristic and allows you to gain the respect of others and to have others follow you, have others see something in you, pattern themselves after you. Also doesn't feel some sort of angst or, I don't know, issue towards you because you might have something. And empathy allows you as yourself to show others that it's a cyclical thing and it's about reciprocity. That's a big word today, reciprocity. So being humble and having humility, looking out for others, showing empathy, knowing when to show empathy and who to show empathy to without making it seem like you are patronizing someone, that's a big quality and skill to have. I'm going to say number 10. Learn how to love. When you learn how to love, you don't just know how to show it. You know how to accept it. You know that it's something that is abstract and not concrete. You know that it's not about giving. It's about giving yourself. And it's not just about receiving. It's about receiving others into your heart, you know, into your life. Knowing how to love a person, whether it's a family member or a significant other, your children, your parents, your teachers, leaders in your community, just knowing how to love somebody, knowing how to love God, knowing how to love uh, people in general. That's something where I believe we lost because of the feeling of being vulnerable. I think it's hard to love without being vulnerable because when you love someone, you have to put yourself out there. You have to give without the expectation of receiving something in return. 
knowing how to love is putting it all out there, giving what you've got to make someone better. Love is doing things that you wouldn't do for yourself oftentimes. And here's the point that I want to make with that. You cannot love someone totally unless you love yourself. So even one through nine of this list is setting you up for number 10, which is learning how to love. Because all these things is pouring something into yourself, making yourself worth something so that way you can pass that on to someone else that you can share that love show that empathy be an example those are all things that to me embodies what love is and you can't love others without loving yourself loving god so we got to get over that idea that love is just physical love is mental Love is emotional, and love is something that is all-encompassing. So, to recap, manners, number one. Two, being social. Three, grooming skills. Four, knowing your way around vehicles. Five, being domestic. Six, building a strong work ethic. Seven, education is your friend. Eight, perseverance. Nine, humility and empathy. 10 learning how to love and i'm gonna throw this extra one into this and i know it's 10 but everyone also has this extra one that i believe is very very important and mine is knowing where to find help you don't always have to be the smartest person in the room but if you know who the smartest person is or where to find help you will never be lost don't ever think that you know it all. Don't ever think that you are the best because there's someone out there that's going to be a little better than you, even if it's on one day. And there's always someone that's going to know a little bit more than you, even if it's that one day. Knowing where to find help also piggybacks on that humility and being comfortable with your education in comparison to someone else's education. It's a sign of respect. It's also a sign of being social because you've built a network of people that are not just smart as you, but smarter than you. Knowing where to find help will always keep you out of trouble. So with that being said, those are my 10 things that I want to teach my sons before I die. If you like this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment down below on things that you want to teach your sons before you die, whether you're a father, mother, grandparent, uh, friend, anyone. Because I do believe these 10 things are things that aren't just things where you want to teach your offspring, but also something that you can share to people in the community or people that you care about. So with that being said, thank you for joining me once again inside the void of intelligence.